Greetings to everyone from all corners of the globe. Welcome to today's sharing of the word. My name is Diane Mbokota. I am the other half of the pastorate of Youth of Purpose for uh, AFMWW in Gorel Fontaine. Um, welcome to today's uh, sharing. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, not only today, but throughout the week that we were hosting the Youth of Purpose conference, online conference. Um, let me take this opportunity to thank our uh, leadership, our senior pastorate, pastors uh, Ellen J. Matebola. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to run the program for the week and uh, it, it's very encouraging to see that you you have faith in, in our and we appreciate we appreciate it very much that you gave us this platform to uh, run the conference so thank you very much for that um, <clears throat> today is the final day of the online conference so that means that uh, I will be concluding the message that we uh, were delivering throughout the week. Um, if we can just uh, have a brief recap of our conference. On Monday, we had uh, Brother Loten Zulu, who was uh, teaching us that uh, he was teaching us about. Uh, um, Jesus has the power to break chains. He has the power to help you through advers adversities. And then on Tuesday, we had Sister Tunani Shuhonda who told us not to panic as long as we walk with our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And then on Wednesday, we had uh, Pastor Dr. Box who fed us wisdom and reminded us that real wisdom comes from uh, the Lord. And then yesterday we had uh, Sister Sophia who told us about the importance of uh, our identity in Christ and how that will help us to navigate through life. Um, so today what I'm going to do is just to share uh, a few words of encouragement to help someone out there uh, under the topic hang in there and hold on to the Lord. Amen. So when we look at our current situation, we, we are living through a very uh, uncertain time. And you might find yourself be sitting at home and looking at our name and saying, what purpose are we talking about when the world, it seems like it's ending. Yes, the world as we know it is coming to an end. The world is not ending, but the world as we know it is coming to an end. What do I mean by that? I mean that on the other side of this pandemic, um, those of us who are going to survive this pandemic are going to carry on living our lives. But things as they used to be will no longer be. Everything will have changed yes. from the economy to the way we social, interact socially, religious interaction, everything that used to be before the pandemic will not be the same. Everything except one thing. And that is the Lord our God. Amen. You may ask yourself, why would I say such a bold statement? Well, it's written in the Bible. I'm going to um, share a few verses that will uh, uh, indicate that. I'm going to use the electronic Bible so that it's quicker because it's quite a few verses that I'm going to share. The first um, word is, is the first verse is going to be from the book of Malachi, um, chapter 3, verse uh, 6. It, it reads as follows I am the Lord. And I do not change. Mm -hmm. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not 
already destroyed. Mm-hmm. Now, the second one is from the book of James. Um, chapter 1, verse 17. It's also New Living Translation. It reads as follows. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. These are very powerful verses. The next one is from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 40, um, verse 28. I'll just open it quickly. Chapter 40, verse 28. It's also in uh, the Living Translation Version. It reads as follows. Have you never heard, have you never understood, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary, and no one can measure the depth of his understanding. Uh, and then the last the last uh, scripture that I chose, there's, there's quite a few of these. I just uh, chose the, the few in the interest of time. It's from the book of Revelation, verse um, chapter 8 sorry, chapter 1 verse 8 it says I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end says the Lord God I am the one who is who always was and who is still to come the Almighty One and that is the Lord is the is the God that we serve, and that is the great I am, and that is the one who tells us to call him our Father, which makes us his children. Now let me share a few uh, verses to this effect. Right, um, we'll quickly go to the book of Gal- uh, Galatians, uh, chapter three, verse twenty-six. It says. For you are all children of God Mm. through faith in Christ Jesus. Mm. Um, The next one is from the book of Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Um, And we're going to extract verse 18. It says, and I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty mm-hmm. and then the last uh, the last one is from, from the book of Romans um, chapter 8 uh, Romans 8 verse 14 um, verse 14 okay just bear with me okay and it, it reads, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, are children of God. Now, when we look at uh, these scriptures that I just read, it's very clear that for you to claim this this um, this, this this status of being a child of God, you need to be in a certain in a particular standing. You need to have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. That's when you can you can you can yeah. thank God. Um, when we look at the book of John, um, chapter one, verse twelve, it says, "But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God." Mm-hmm. Now, when we, when we, when I look at all these verses, it says that for you to reap the benefits of being a child of God, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you, when you, when you do that, then when you go back to the messages that were shared throughout the week, on Monday, Brother Zul was telling us about breaking the chains. When you're a child of God, then you can call upon Jesus mm-hmm. to break those chains. Amen. You can call upon Jesus 
to help you through these adversities. And then when you when you when you when you're facing storms, like Sister Tulani was telling us, that you call Jesus if you if you're in the permanent dwelling, if Jesus is in your permanent uh, dwelling because you've accepted him, then you can just shake him and say, Jesus, here are the storms, calm them. I mean, right now there are a lot of storms that people are facing. There's the storm of fear. People are scared of this. Uh, pandemic. There's the storm of worry. People don't know what's going to happen with their futures. There's the storm of depression, anxiety, confusion, sadness, and even anger. All of these storms, Jesus can command to quieten down. But you need to have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, when you, when you are in good standing with 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 uh, the Lord, when you you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then we go and we go back to the the the, the, the wisdom message that was pre preached by uh, Pastor Doc. You have access to that wisdom. Mm -hmm. You are given that access to that wisdom, the the wisdom to make the right choices. Mm -hmm. The wisdom to harness and apply common sense. Mm. The wisdom to achieve greatness. Mm. That's what she said to us. That if you are in good standing with the Lord, then you can access that wisdom. And that's what happens. That those are the, the benefits. She, she called it Lady Wisdom. And you know what? Lady Wisdom can be your relative. Mm. If you are you, 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 you have accepted uh, Jesus Christ and you are the, the, the son of uh, the almighty God. And then when, when you're also, when you're a child of God, then you know your identity. Like Sophia was explaining to us yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know your identity. And when you know your identity, she told us that then you, you, you know that you will conduct yourself in a way that will impact other people in a very positive way. Because you know your identity, and your identity is being the child of God. Now, in this very um, uncertain time of that we are face, facing of the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, many people are confused. Some people don't know what day of the week it is. Some people don't know what where their next income is going to come in. Some people don't know. Where, what, how they're going to feed their families. And those are the realities that we're facing. You know, some people are gripped by the fear of contracting the disease and dying. Some are mortified by the thought of losing a loved one to this disease. Some are even horrified by the fact that this pandemic is going to collapse the economy and take their, their uh, legacy with, with it. Mm -hmm. And those are the realities that we are facing today. And some people are going through depression because of the extended lockdown. Some people crave human interaction. Some people crave, crave social socializing with their family, friends and families. Some people crave that relevance that they get by performing their jobs. They are unable to go to work, so they they, 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 they sort of lose that uh, um, relevance. Some people are losing hope. You know, they don't know what's going to happen after this pandemic. They don't see themselves going anywhere after this pandemic. They are afraid of losing their jobs. They are afraid of losing their, their careers. It's a very trying time for everyone. Basically, the world has, has, has ground to a halt. And that's, that's the reality that we are being faced with. Um, there's an American uh, author and, and, and radio speaker. Uh, his name is uh, his name was L. Nightingale. Um, he was a specialist in human character development. There was a broadcast that uh, Dr. Box was listening to the other day, and I sort of eavesdropped, and I heard him mention something that I thought was very profound. Um, I'm gonna quote him. He says. Advers adversity introduces a person to themselves. Mm. 
And then he also said, problems are the same for everyone. It is how we react to them that sets us apart. Mm -hmm. Now, the second statement immediately becomes applicable because we are, everyone is, is facing the uh, coronavirus pandemic, but in different ways. You know, we are all in our own little uh, spaces, so to speak. Um, there are people that are well off, there are people that are not well off, there are people that are destitute, but everyone is facing this, this pandemic. So the problem is the same, but how you approach it, it sets us apart. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where that the, the, the former statement of saying adversity introduces you, a person, to themselves. So what do I mean by that? I mean that it's it's a question that it's it's a it's a statement that one should consider to say okay we are faced with adversity. The adversity is, is the uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. What do I do? Who do I turn to? What do you choose to be? Are you a child of God? Are you self reliant? Do you depend on yourself? Are you going to Google um, fortune tellers to assist you? Who are you? Who are you? If you are a child of God, then you know you have some problems. Um, if you find yourself struggling uh, with your mind playing tricks on you, the devil trying to confuse you, then you go to the book of uh, Philippians um, chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. This is my mantra. I, I live by this verse. Mm -hmm. It says, don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done for you. And then you experience Peace, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. And that peace will guard your heart and your mind mm -hmm. as you live in Christ Jesus. So you see, that factor is still there. You have to live in Christ Jesus. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You've got a solution. If you find yourself fearful because of the pandemic, you simply wash your hands, sanitize, cover your mouth and your nose, and go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. Now, I, I, I like this in the... Let me just read it, read it for you. Um, I don't want to... Uh, Paraphrase that I want to I want to read, read it so so you can hear what it says. Um, Isaiah chapter forty one verse ten. It says, "Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. Don't let anything terrify you. I will make you strong." And and I will protect you and save you. Amen. Yeah. So, will you be fearful when you have that kind of assurance? Surely you can't be fearful. That's another benefit of being a child of God. Hmm. If you find yourself uncertain and not knowing where Then you go to the book, go back to the book of chapter 4. Now, this time, verse 19. Apostle Paul tells us, he says to us, and the same God who takes care of you mm -hmm. will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Once again, you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
then you are able to tap into these things. If you find yourself losing hope, then you go to the book of uh, Psalms 71 verse 5. It says, For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Yeah. He's been, I, 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 I showed you in uh, earlier that he does not change. Even when in your youth he was the same, you can still depend on him as long as you have that relationship with him. If you find yourself discouraged, then the, the, you go to the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 31, verse 6. It tells us that we should be strong, we should be courageous, we should not be afraid or panic, yeah. because the Lord God, the Lord God, He will personally walk in front of us. Mm -hmm. He will not fail us. He will not abandon us. And that, that is another benefit of being able to reach out to the Lord and um, assistance. Um, if you ever start feeling worn out, tired or then the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 it tells us that and this is the New Living Translation version right it says to us those who trust in the Lord mm -hmm. will find new strength Amen. they will soar high on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint. Now the New King, King James Version says the same, uh, the same verse, but in the New King James Version it says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For me personally, this verse, I prefer it in stronger. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the stronger version is it's it just it, it it does it does it a lot of justice. Maybe because I'm uh, stronger and I prefer to hear it in my own language. But um, okay, let me just open it quickly. Right, it, 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 it says in strong. Right? Lava Tembaka goes Matakuma Matakuma Matiba Mansa. But I have to put this among Gama. But I have we love this, this, this verse so much as Tonga people. We turn it into a song, a very nice song that if I could sing, I would sing it for. But in conclusion of my message, if do you, do you want to soar like an eagle? Do you want renewed strength? Do you want to walk and run and not faint and not grow weary? You can get all that. All you need to do is to hang in there and hold on to the Lord. Okay. That is the message that I had to share with everyone today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, once again, I would like to, on behalf of the Youth of Purpose of Apostolic Faith Mission, Worship and Word, I'd like to say to our leadership, Pastors Ellen Jane Matebula, 
thank you so very much for entrusting us with such a responsibility and it's very it shows that you you see what we have um, amongst our youth you see that there's a future there the future for to carry on with the work of the lord and to lead not just in church but also in the country as well so thank you very much and i hope you enjoyed the sharing of the word um, good night